This is Maurice Preston, and you're joining us for another segment of the Soul and Mo Show. Hey, well, thank you for joining me. This is Maurice Preston, and we're about to delve into a whole realm of theatrics. And what I'm meaning is, we're about to join as my guest, Ella Joyce. And she's coming from Los Angeles to do a performance. The title of this presentation, which is a one-act play, is called A Rose Among Thorns. And it's the life of Rosa Parks. And I'm going to do a little interview with her. And we're going to learn a little bit about her and about this play that she's about to do. This is a part or a segment of a whole week of activities that's circling around the Rosa Parks celebration and unveiling of her statue in Grand Rapids at the Rosa Parks Circle. So uh, join me, Maurice Preston, and we will get into Miss Ella Joyce. The So and Mo Show. Straight from Los Angeles, California. Let's welcome her at. Hey, <laughs> she just flew in. Just flew in. <laughs> How was that flight? It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Yeah. Hey, I love her. Great. Great, Great captain. How long did it take for you to get from there? Well, it takes about four or five hours. You know, we had a layover in Chicago. Okay, you know how okay, that can get. Okay, yeah. But uh, it was a couple hours. Couple hours. Yeah, you, but you know people in Chicago. Oh yeah. You well, them up. my grandparents were from Chicago, oh, okay. so that's like a second hometown for Where me. Where were you born? Uh, well, I was born in Chicago, right outside Chicago. And uh, you know what? I was Wait raised in Detroit. We are neighbors because I'm from Gary, Indiana. Oh. And we like right next door to each other. We're neighbors. Yeah, we're Neighbors, home people, like, yeah. That's called East Chicago. East Chicago. See, yeah. everybody don't know that. You got to really be from that yeah, area yeah, to know right, that that's right. East Chicago. Did you know that Stevie Wonder was born in East Chicago? Yes, I'm from Detroit, so I know about Stevie. A lot of and people think he's from Detroit. I saw um, little Michael Jackson when he was four or five years old at the Regal in Chicago. Oh, yeah. They yeah, was performing, like, I done with dated myself. Oh, yeah, <laughs> she's dating herself. I'm dated myself. That's all right. She's but still it's looking okay. good. She's looking great. Well, thank you, darling. Yes, you deserve that. <laughs> Let's talk about this uh, little performance you're doing here. Oh. Have you ever been to Grand Rapids before? This is my first time in Grand Rapids. My Won't very be. first time. Will not be her last either. No, I don't think so. I, I like it. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I had no idea it was as beautiful as it is. Did you know this was the second largest city in That's Michigan? That's what I was told today. The second largest city in Michigan. Who would have thought? There's a lot of things that people don't know about Michigan that, I mean, because I came from L.A. I lived in, oh. yeah, I, I lived in L.A. for 27 years. Wow. Moved That's where Gary. I live now. Now. Yeah. yeah so... I mean, we like trailing each other. She's from Chicago, yeah. I was from Gary. We both moved and we went to LA, and now she's yeah. in Grand Rapids, where I'm from. It's like, what are we stalking each other or what? No, I know. We must be cousins. We cousins or something. or something, yeah. Why not? Be, Kindred spirits. You know, in spirit for sure, for sure. But yeah, um, this performance here in Grand Rapids is uh, uh, a segment of a whole lot of events that's going on this whole week. It's like, you know, um, the Deltas are sponsoring something, which They're sponsoring is sponsoring me. you. They're sponsoring my show. They bought it in because they're a wonderful city. And uh, they're doing the, the whole thing this week, um, honoring Rosa Parks. Right, right. And unveiling a statue, right. um, as I understand, done by the great artist, Ed Dwight. I am so excited Where about that. Where is he that. from, Denver? Uh, I, and I think so. Yeah. I, think uh, I, I saw it. his work in Denver. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. A friend of mine, God rest his soul, uh, mm. Jeffrey Nicholson, he ran the Shadow Theater in Denver and okay. called my show oh, okay. at the Newman Center a couple of years ago. All right. And uh, he took my stage manager and I mm. to go see Ed Dwight's work at the park. Okay. I was blown away. Wow. It's I was like blown this. away. I really was. Wow. We saw the statue of Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner True. I mean, it was wow. just, it, it was awesome. Wow. It was absolutely awesome. Historical greats. Yeah, yeah. Ed DeWhite's work is exquisite. Mm. So I'm looking forward to the unveiling of the Willis Park statue here. You know, uh, a lot of people, they like to get into the depth 
of finding out about different things that's connected with this. So if you wanted to find out about more works of the sculpture who did this Rosa Parks sculpture, I'm sure you can Google it. I'm sure you can. Ed Dwight, he is a renowned sculpturist mm -hmm. and his work is awesome. If you don't know him as an artist, you need to familiarize yourself because he's awesome. I love it when you see uh, sculptors and paintings of black people mm -hmm. and it really looks like us. It right. really looks right. like them, whoever it's supposed to be. And it's beautiful. And the, his statue work was just beautiful. I mean, we went to go see it in Denver in the middle of all the snow in December mm -hmm. and we just stayed out there in the park just wow. sitting around it and watching it and feeling that wonderful energy of the spirits of our ancestors. So I'm so excited to be here. Well, we're glad to have you here. and We're excited to see you when we you do your performance tomorrow yes. night. My play is A Rose Among Thorns, a tribute to Rosa Parks. It is a one-woman play, which I wrote. And uh, yes, I wrote it. You did a well. spectacular job. Thank I was just you. premiering, previewing a little bit of it, and it was so mellow. Thank it was so you. smooth. I was just like getting lost in it. Oh, oh it was just wonderful. like. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you. Well, I've been taking the play around the country for mm -hmm. the past three years. I've been to about 25 cities. Already? We just go into small little community places, okay. we go into churches. We go into schools. I even went to three rural towns, uh, schools in Alabama. Okay. The Alabama State Council of the Arts brought me in there for a week. Wow. And uh, that was after they show, saw the show at the Alabama Shakespeare Festival stage. Georgette Norman, who runs the um, Rosa Parks Museum in okay. Montgomery, Alabama. I was about where to say Montgomery. Happened. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. that was special. I'm sure it was. That was special. We were about yeah. to tears. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because she is like, Georgette Norman is like a walking encyclopedia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she took us all around Montgomery. We went to see where Rosa Parks lived. Okay. That apartment is still there. Wow. Um, Do they have like a little monument uh, plaque saying, yeah, you know? Yeah, they got things there and it's clean. Okay. Everything is real clean. Okay. The uh, place where she was arrested is a landmark. Mm -hmm. And they have that right there. Um, wow. And we also, she took us on a ride to show us how far those people walked during the boycott from Rosa Parks' home to downtown Montgomery where she was working right, right. at the department store, like right. 20 miles. These right. people were getting up wow. and walking to work every single day rather than the ride the bus in humiliation. But she only asked for one day of a boycott and to it, not take the bus. And it turned into 381 days. I didn't know that. Is that awesome? 381 days nobody rode that bus. That put a hurt on them. Baby, it changed the laws. Woo! Changed the laws. And what we want to do is remind people, especially our youth, mm -hmm. that we are the people. Mm. The people control what's going on. It's what the people say. That's, mm -hmm. that's what America is all about. The majority right. rules. The, the people, people rule. And so this law, which was archaic, which was a immoral, mm -hmm. which was wrong, wrong. we oh. bought, the, the, those people during the Civil Rights Movement bought that city to its knees and the laws had to change. And so when people come and see my show, I've done a lot of research and they learn things that aren't in the school books, things that they didn't know, and things that we all should know. We should make sure that our children, our youth, mm -hmm. know these stories. They, they can't be hoodwinked into thinking, we don't need to talk about that stuff anymore. Oh, we don't no. need to remember that slate. This is a new day. This we don't history, want to think. Oh. That's being hoodwinked into something that's going to do you a disservice and a disadvantage. Amen. Because every that's other right. culture of people know their history. They know some of the most, you know, the Holocaust, the mm -hmm. tragic things mm -hmm. that may have happened. And their youth, even though they didn't experience it, they're up on it. They know what happened. Our youth is the only ones that have been hoodwinked and influenced into thinking 
you don't need to talk about that stuff anymore. But you need to talk about it. You need to talk about it all the time. You need to talk about it every day. We need to keep history alive. You know, because, I mean, I mean, there is so much out there now that people avoid learning about the background and the blackness of what's important with our culture. And we need to be up on that. And it's so easy nowadays. Technology has made it so easy. All you have to do is go on your computer and Google the title of what you're trying to find out about. It's not like you have to go to the library, you have to look it up, you go to a reference department, and you got to look up this particular Rosa Parks, you got to right. look up the go bus. The like we did. Like we, we did. did. We I mean, it was harder. Yes. We had to go to the encyclopedias. Uh, we had to go to all the... You can Google anything now. You can Google, Google my show. A Rose Among Thorns .com. Do it. <laughs> AroseAmongThorns.com Just because it leaves Grand Rapids doesn't mean that you can't Google it and find out where it's going to be playing at next. Yes. And I've got a calendar right there on my website. Matter of fact, December 19th, uh, we'll be in Louisville, Kentucky. The uh -huh. Muslim Journal okay. is sponsoring my show at a the, the new Muhammad Ali Center mm -hmm. that they're opening up in okay. Louisville, which is his hometown. Right, right. So they're sponsoring my show. I'll be closing out a weekend festival there. Okay. And January 15th, I'll be doing the show in uh, Los Angeles. It'll be sponsored by Judge Maybelline's foundation, oh. the Maybelline Ephraim Foundation, and that'll wow. be at West uh, Angeles Christian Church. I know. Oh, Christian. And all of this is on my calendar at the website. Wow. So, Did you just leave New York not too long ago? Doing this? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, earlier this year in the spring, uh, I was at the Billie Holiday Theater for, because I usually just do a limited engagement, just a weekend or maybe one show mm -hmm. at an event. So I was there, I did uh, a show um, at the Billie Holiday Theater in Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, I was at Black Spectrum in Jamaica, Queens. As a matter of fact, I've been there twice. Oh, you did? The Jamaica branch in AACP sponsored me this, this okay. second time. Okay. And uh, we ran the show there, a couple of shows. Uh, mm -hmm. The first time I did it, I did it at Black Spectrum for a whole week. And the brother there, uh, Carl Clay, brought in school. Okay. How long, how long uh, is the play, the production? It's uh, one hour and 15, 20 minutes with no intermission. Okay. So that means people who want to come and see this, get there on time. Don't come expecting to, to sneak in 10 minutes after she's gotten into it because it's kind of a disturbing factor. So you want to be on time when you make it. 8 o'clock. Isn't that 7? Oh, my bad. My bad. 7. Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Aquinas College Circle Theater. So, uh, Ella, it's been a, a pleasure. You know, I wanted to ask you also, is this a, a big step? Yep. Up from the TV. Well, I'm still doing films. Okay, okay. I just finished shooting a film uh, last month called Hopelessly in June. A little cute uh, romantic comedy. Okay. Um, and I also uh, shot a major Warner Brothers film that just came out on DVD earlier this year called Preacher's Kid. Okay. Starring okay. Latoya Luckett from Destiny's Child and Tank. Oh, there wow. and it is a good film. Y'all oh. go get that film. Oh, People yeah. are loving that film. Preacher's Kid. <laughs> Everybody loves it. I mean, wow. churches and pastors are encouraging their congregation to go and see it. Okay. So when's the last time you heard a pastor encouraging their congregation to go see a movie? Mm -hmm. So I'm really proud wife. to be in it. Uh, Preacher's yeah. Kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've done a bunch of movies on DVD. Uncle P. Master P and I play brother okay. and sister, right, and some right. nice little kitty movies. So I, I do a lot of films. Um, oh, you can always Google yeah. Ella. EllaJoyce.com. You can go to EllaJoyce.com and you can see everything that I'm doing. Bada boom, bada bang. So, and and um, next month I'll be going to Yale. I did my show of Rose Among Thorns at Yale mm -hmm. uh, earlier this spring. Did one specific performance. That's when the Muslim Journal decided to pick me up. Okay. But uh, I'll be going back to Yale next month to do another play by a new playwright called, uh, her name is Kirsten Greenwich, and I'll be doing a play called Bossa Nova. So I'll be there for about three months. Okay. So the thing is, as an artist, you stay busy oh, and yeah. you go from one project to the next. Okay. This is my show, so I keep it going you know, all the time. It's not that I'm doing this or something else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is my mission. Okay. My okay. personal mission right. to give back to our people, mm -hmm, to give back mm -hmm. to the community. We need to know about the civil rights movement and 
we need to know about Rosa Parks. So I'm using whatever my celebrity is or my familiarity is with people right. to bring their attention to something much more important than any of us, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the preservation of our African American, our precious African American history precious. and our culture. Yes, so I is. do my show all the time. Mm -hmm. I fit it in between the movies, in between doing other plays, in between once in a while doing television. Now, you mentioned television specifically. There's not a whole lot on television for African Americans right now. It just isn't. I mean, turn on Channel 2, turn on Channel 4, turn on Channel 7. Yeah, that's true. You are not going to see any new black shows. The there only things that I was seeing was the, what, the Wire, right? That's not new. Well, I'm talking about new shows well, that come to the air every single year. Right. You got all these new shows coming to the air this year, and none of them are black shows. Now we're happy. Now I'm talking about network TV. I'm not even talking about cable. Right, I'm talking right. About network. network, which right. pays a mint. See, I was talking about cable. Okay, yeah. now cable, we got a few. We got, thank God, we got Jada Pinkett with Hawthorne. Thank God we got a few little things here and there. We got, you know, Dave Chappelle's show. We got a few little things there. But I'm talking about what's being in production right now. Right. So if you go and turn on your television tonight mm -hmm. and turn on Channel 2, I will assure you, you are not going to see any black actors employed for the most part. Okay, you might see one hmm. on one show somewhere, maybe, but you are not going to see us. Now, take a little backpedaling to the 90s. Oh, the yeah. Black shows. So, Kind of like What's the exploitation era, okay. like that. But, you know, I, I didn't even look at it that way. I looked at it as I thought we were emerging as equal opportunity employment in the industry. We had some good shows. We had some bad shows. Just like the white folks. They got right. some good shows. They got some bad shows. Oh, everybody's got the good and the bad, yeah, you know. We have it's going to be shows. like that all right. But around. why aren't the shows there now? Why, that that means when you don't see black shows on television, that means you, it's not just black actors that are unemployed. It's black directors, black cameramen, black mm -hmm. costume people, mm -hmm. black everybody that works on that show. That means that nobody is being employed, and there's something wrong with that. So you people who have some gifts and those talents that can do this, you need to get out there and get these jobs. We need to see you out there on the screen. We need to create our own jobs. We, we need and to do that. I mean, like Oprah. Oprah's that's getting ready right. to start her own network. She's amazing. Well, maybe we'll get some more TV shows on her and stuff. At least. Yeah. But, you know, my biggest issue is that there's always just one. And mm -hmm. there's so many talented African-Americans. Oh, yeah. They don't get opportunities that they should get. Right. And so what we have to do is just keep forging along, keep praying that times really do change. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that we will get to a point where we really all are one. We're shooting for that. I just have to mention that I myself happen to be in a motion picture that's getting ready to premiere at October the 1st and October the 2nd at Celebration Cinema here in Grand Rapids called Small Change. Oh, I like the title. Oh yeah, Small, Small Change. Change. I like that. Yeah, so you can, um, you know, it Facebook. And it's gonna be on DVD, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this has been about the sixth movie that this director Chris Penny has done and so I play a lead role in this as a blues player. Oh, yeah. Sing. Well no I play. Just the yeah I'm just okay, playing the actor fine. and stuff. Oh, but uh fun. yeah it's, it's a first for me too. You know, I came to LA trying to do this stuff and I ain't had no luck. I had to come to Grand Rapids and this is my Hollywood so I'm yes, doing it here. Well, that's all right. You bring Hollywood wherever Hollywood need to be. Need to be. Okay. And it seems like this is the place where it's coming because they've done well, like about six movies you here know, already. They have this serious um, tax incentive right. for SAG movies in the state of Michigan now. That's, That's why a lot of the real serious high budget movies are mm -hmm. starting to come to Michigan. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's something like, uh, I, I may be a little off, but I think it's as high as like 40% tax break. Yeah, so people are running to Michigan to make movies. Um, Clint Eastwood, as I understand it, That's right. three movies here. That's you know, right. Grand Torino. Grand shot Torino. Right in Detroit. I, I recognize the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Say, oh, I know this place. I was, I was yeah, hanging out right there. You know, yeah. So I'm glad they're they're going to be bringing they are bringing movie making to Michigan. Mm -hmm. And what I would like to see, and this is a tip for those of you that's out here listening, I think I'm going about to inspire somebody here with an idea. 
What I would like to see is all of those abandoned buildings in Detroit and all of the bad blight that you see on a lot of those streets. I mean, that's my hometown and I love it. What I would like to see is somebody take those abandoned buildings and turn them into sound stages. Mm. Do you hear me? Sound stage warehouses. That is where the next golden goose is mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. people that are paying attention. You take a building for what a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars if yep. it's if it's that dilapidated. Small change. Turn it into a sound stage. You know what a sound stage is. And then what happens with that is when these big budget movies come into Detroit, they're looking for sound stages to go, you know, shoot up a whole room full of people for their gangbuster movies. And or, they got money to do you it. You know, some place to, to put their little romantic love stories in a house somewhere. That's and what right. they do is they come in, they bring the furniture, the production company will paint it, turn it into whatever they need to turn it into, mm -hmm. because it's just temporary. It's just some place for them to shoot for a week or a month or a day. You right. can get a lot of money that way. You can get have your house can actually be rented for a movie. And I'm telling this to the people in Michigan because I want to see us become players in this industry. It's opening up right now. And it's opening up for those that are smart enough as entrepreneurs to jump on this. That's why Los Angeles is Hollywood. That's why they shoot movies there. It's big sound stages everywhere. That's all those studios are. Big sound stages. We can build the same kind of thing that they have there. Warner Brothers in, you know, Detroit, except it be, you know, Jackson Brothers or something. You know, the William Brothers, you know, something black. You know? Warner Brothers, yeah. That's what we just got to tie it together. We got to come together. Hey, that's a good advice. So you need to listen and you, you need to tip. take that at heart. Because that is where our future could be, could be. and to turn the we city around it. that yes, way. Sir. Because once they know, the reason they're coming to Detroit and to Michigan to shoot these movies is because they're saving so much money. money. So what's going to happen if all of a sudden you start taking out ads in the paper, in the SAG paper, you know, yeah. in L.A. and letting them know, you're looking for a place to shoot your movie? Shoot it right here in this building. You can turn it into your... Um, you know, three tier building, you one floor, you can have untouchable shooting everybody Ooh, up. Bang, Another bang, floor, bang, bang. You, can do you turn it into a sound stage, you make it. it whatever you need to shoot movies in, you know, and then you can begin to, to start school for people yeah. to, to really learn the movie business. Casting companies can be started in Michigan right now. Extras. Right now. Can become the Sylvia Fay of Detroit. Everybody wants to be a star. This is the opportunity. You need to get online. You need to find out these things. You need to inquire. That's why this station and this show is a community oriented thing. And we let you know about these things and how you can get involved and how you should get involved. So this is some great advice that she's giving you. You need to take it to heart. So I really appreciate all that she's said today. And I want you to come out and support the program tomorrow at Acquaintance College Circle Theater, 7 o'clock. Be on time. Please be on time. Check out my website, arosamongthorns.com, ellajoyce.com. I am the owner of Miss Thing Productions. Miss Thing Productions Miss Thing, Miss Incorporated. Thing. No, it's Miss Thing. Miss Thing. Miss Thing. We know how to spell. All right. Miss then. Thing Productions <laughs> Incorporated. Okay. We got that right. <laughs> okay. Hey, well, this is Maurice Preston and the Mo and So Show. Peace out. Like I understand you